How's it going guys? Derek Craig here with oilfieldbasics.com and today we're going to be talking about what the red zone is during hydraulic fracturing operations, a little bit about zipper fracking, and then we're going to talk about how something called the rig lock system is changing the game. Before we go on, I want to remind you guys to check out our courses at oilfieldbasics.com learn. We have a couple of courses there that are going to help walk you through the fundamentals of the oil and gas industry and our operations from pre-planning to drilling completions to fracking and even production and through the decline in, in plug back of a well. So we'll talk about all that in our courses, so check them out. And also be sure to follow us on our social media, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn. Be sure to follow us and always be getting the content as we put it out. All right, so on a typical horizontal shale well here in the United States that is being completed, you are going to have two different operations that are occurring simultaneously on any well pad that has more than one well. So those operations are going to be hydraulic fracturing operations and also wireline operations. Now wireline is going to be prepping that well for the frac crew to come in and actually stimulate the reservoir. So what we call this is zipper fracking. So you're working on two different wells at one time. So here's kind of what this looks like. Now this is a bird's eye view looking down into the formation. You have two laterals side by side or two different wells. So on one well, the frac crew is going to be stimulating that reservoir. So they're actually going to be fracking the well. And at the same time, the wireline crew is going to be on the opposite well, actually putting perforations into the casing and getting it ready for the ensuing frack job. And that's going to continue. So once that stage is done, once they get done, they're going to pull out and they're going to swap wells. They're going to swap wells at surface. And so on wireline, you have to swap your bring your lubricator from your well that you were just perfed into the next well that you're going to work on. So they have to swap their lubricator from one well to the other to be able to complete and to be able to go in and perforate this next well. So after that's done, they're going to swap. So this well is going to be fracked while the other well is going to be plugged and perfed, thus ready for the next, for this stage to be fracked. So basically, wireline is working on one well and the frack crews are working on the other well. And this is done for efficiency. So as you can imagine, each crew is always working in one well. So frack isn't waiting on wireline and wireline isn't going to be waiting on the frack. So that's the point of zipper frack in general. But what happens sometimes is that wireline will actually get their job done before frack. Just the nature of the treatments, the frack often goes on for an hour or two or more. Meanwhile, wireline, depending on the length of the lateral, can be in and out of a well quicker than that. So the red zone is the area around all of this pressurized iron. So whenever the hydraulic fracturing process is going on, you have the frack crews pumping at high rates and high pressures. And so nobody should be around the iron in case there was to be a breach in the, in the integrity of the iron. So that is what we call the red zone. It's the area that nobody can go around while those pipes are under pressure. So thus, typically, the wireline crew cannot swap from one well to the next while the fracking operations are still going on. The standard wireline operations require human intervention to actually swap between wells. And again, this is issue if you're actually in the red zone but this typically is done once the frack crew is done pumping and then they can go in, humans can actually enter into the red zone and then actually be lifted up by a man lift to disconnect the lubricator, which is what holds all the wireline tools and provides the pressure seal around the wireline. A human will actually have to be lifted up in a man basket and disconnected at surface physically with his hands. This creates multiple safety hazards, including crushed fingers or hand injuries because of the weight of the lubricator and pinch points. Also fallen objects being dropped off the man lift and also pressure hazards because again, you are over a wellhead. Now the rig lock is a device that was created to actually allow for the lubricator and wire line to be swapped from one well to the next during zipper fracking operations while the frack crew is still pumping on another well. So this allows wireline to switch wells while no human is allowed in the red zone. All right, so we met up with Scotty Brown to walk us through how the rig lock system actually works. Before I cut to that clip of him explaining it, I wanna show it here in the studio. So here we've got three wells and you can see how this system allows the lubricator to switch from well to well without any human intervention and to securely lock it onto the well head. So once you wanna disengage it or let it off, the lock ring is gonna slide upwards, disengage the cam locks and then it's going to slide over and guide into the next well head through the funnel and then the cam locks are going to will then close on the shoulder of the lubricator sealing it uh, pressure tight and then the secure locking ring will slide down 
over top of the cam lock. So you can know that it's secured and then it is pressure tight from any wrong location, you can see those cam locks. The bowl here on top is the funnel and this is just very wide to make the crane operator, um, to, to give him the ability to successfully land the lubricator into the rig lock. A uh, lockdown ring here is opened, the cams will open, which allows the stinger to be placed inside of the rig lock. The cams will close on the stinger, pull it down into a nice tight O-ring seal. The lock ring comes down um, to secure the cams in case um, a hydraulic pressure was lost. The cams don't inadvertently open. Other than that, it, when you pull it into the O-ring seal, there's a quick test sub located in here that we can pressurize uh, between the O-rings to make sure that we have a good seal uh, before opening up the well, as well as the 1502 pump-in port that uh, we're able to, to pump fluids into the well if need be. Okay. Um, not on this unit is a, a nightcap extractor that we actually use uh, that will insert and remove the nightcap remotely as well. Um, like I said, it's not on this unit for uh, demonstration purposes. Now, of course, the greatest benefit from using this system is going to be the increased safety. You no longer have to have a man suspended in the man left basket to disconnect and then connect the lubricator on another well. Also, Renegade is claiming about 30 to 40 minutes saved per well swap. So and not having to get a man in that man left basket and do everything manually, you're seeing a, a big time savings. Also, they're claiming about three to four extra stages per day, which is great for the operators. This allows for a much more efficient day. Another benefit from this system is that you can remotely drop the frack ball and the frack ball will actually seat in the frack plug to actually form the seal. And this is something that, again, a man would typically do in a man left basket suspended over the wellhead. And again, this system allows that to be done remotely. And of course, the rig lock system is available in multiple different pressure ratings. And if you're more interested on the technical aspects of this system, and if you're viewing this video on our website, check below and we'll have some of the material there for you to check out. Thanks again for watching another oilfoodbasics.com video blog. Be sure again to check out our courses and subscribe to our media channels, and we'll see you in the next video.